Bob. My name is Jim Ronke. And what do you do? I'm a consultant for Destiny Training Partners. I also am a website content manager and a project manager for the sales and distribution of green chemicals. Tell me about the, the web design. The, the, uh, the other things I understood, but how did you get into web design? Well, basically my background is I've been in environmental services for over 35 years. Um, probably about 15 years ago, I was approached about selling green cleaning products. Started doing that, and we had somebody actually doing a work for us in a department, an outside source for doing web design, Photoshop, things like that. And my boss came to me one day and said, you know what, we're going to cut back on your sales, and you're going to be in charge of um, website content design. And I said, I have no idea what that is. I don't know how to do it. I'm not computer savvy. And they said, it's OK, just work at it. So I spent hours pulling my hair out, learning everything there was to know about content management, putting things up on the website, utilizing Photoshop, until finally I became good at it. And uh, it took a little while, but now it's easy. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, talk about persistent. Yeah, it was, uh, wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but it worked out. It worked out? Yeah, that's yeah, man, worked good, out. good for you for taking on the challenge. I mean, and then look what it does for you later. I'm sure by understanding the internet and the digital world, it certainly has you know, helped you with all the things you do today. Yeah. That's amazing. So you mentioned earlier you know, you've been in EVS for 35 years. Right. So what did that look like 35 years ago? How did you get into that, and, and what have your roles been in EVS? Well, Sonny, I was looking for a uh, job during high school, and my brother at the time was a district manager for a cleaning contractor. So he says, you know, would you like a job working in a hospital? You'd be mopping floors, uh, stripping floors, you know, anything to do with patient care. And I said, yeah, I'll do it. I said, I need to do something right now. Right. So I started that work, and what I realized is I'm very results-oriented. So I like to see things get done, and I like to... I like to be very good at it. So when he, he took me into that job, he put me with his best employee, mm -hmm. and we started working together. And I was really entertained by the fact of how somebody made certain floors look and how carpets came out clean and how somebody dealt with patients and how they dealt with one another on the floors. So I thought that was a good opportunity for me. So i very social. And when I started going to college, my brother called me back and said, listen, the hospital actually requested that if you can come back, but I need you to come back as a supervisor. So I said, yeah. I said, you know, I really don't have a lot of management experience. I just thought, he said, well, we'll work with you. So well, back then, we actually had to go through a whole training system. You know, you want to wait for a week or two weeks to be trained on everything from regular environmental cleaning to management styles. And what I see what's different now is that people just get thrust into those positions yes. without any training. Right. And it kind of drives me crazy because I know what I went through and I know the difference between being, I, I guess I would say meticulous about different things mm -hmm. where I see somebody now treated as they just pass it over and it's not as important. Right. Where I need that to be perfect. So that's the big difference I see. I don't think that people are getting the training, and I don't think they're paying as much attention to details as I did when I first came up. And, and a lot of that also has to also come from the objectives of the organization. I mean, there's some organizations who are, are much more dialed in than others and have higher standards than others. So, I mean, but kudos to you for, you know, recognizing what, what a better product is. So let me ask you this. So, <clears throat> so you're doing this job working uh, at your brother's company. Did you finish school? Did you continue? Yes. When that yes. So, so you were working and going to college doing this. Yes. So wow. basically during the day I would go to school and then on the evening I would come back and work uh, in environmental services department. And so, and then when you graduated and you just kept going on and moved up? Yeah, so what happened, and it's a funny story, is that a lot of my friends, you know, we all kind of took the same route. Everybody had jobs and then was working. Yeah. And when I started working, I was making a lot more money than they were. Right. 
So I said, well, you know what? Instead of going into what I originally looked at, I was actually, sounds funny, but I was going to be a dentist and uh, changed my course about midway through and said, you know what? I can do this. I'm working in a hospital. I'm still able to help people. Yeah. And it's kind of an important job. I'm getting paid good for it, and I enjoy it. That's fantastic. That's, yeah. I, that's not quite the, the career path of being a dentist, is no, it? No, no. And, um, you know, I, I never regret it. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you could have been making so much money, but I'm not really a money-oriented person. Yeah. I'm um, a family guy, and I like to help people. I'm very social. I like the people. I like people enjoying themselves. Yeah. So working in a hospital and getting to interact with so many different kinds of people, that was perfect for me. It really is. Uh, hospitals are like a microcosm of society, aren't they? I mean, oh, you yeah. got everything going on in there. You know, uh, everything from plumbing to doctors to you know sick people, the well people. I mean, you've got it's a it's a huge, uh, it's an interesting culture and environment. It's really a, a great place to work because of that. I right. mean, I run into everybody and deal with people that are doctors to transporters to warehouse workers. I, in fact, I just right. spent, during the pandemic, I had to work in uh, receiving and distribution mm -hmm. uh, because we were deployed and, you know, a lot of people were missing um, staff. Sure. And it was probably one of the best experiences I had. I actually wrote a story about it for the hospital how important that this department is because there's so many departments in the hospital yeah. that don't get the recognition they deserve. Yeah. So I felt it was a good way for me to put it out there to let everybody know that, you know, these service departments are just as important as anybody else that works in the hospital. I've had the pleasure of having a lot of conversations with senior leadership in hospitals and, and this this one conversation I had with the CEO of a hospital was it was very different than what I expected. And, and, you know, a lot of us think about hospitals and, and we understand what they're doing there and, and there's a lot of pressure and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's in kind of a different environment. It's not like a business, but there is business aspects to it because there's money involved. Right. But this guy was all about career development for the staff. That's all he talked about. The entire conversation was about career development for the team. And, and this guy... Had a PhD, he had been, he had been a, a psychiatrist for years, and then he became a hospital administrator. Now he's the CEO of a hospital. And it was all about the people. And to me, that's who's making that hospital run for you, is the right. people. So I feel that's very important. As a leader, I was always one to put my people first. Mm -hmm. And if they could move on and better their selves, and if they wanted to move on, become a doctor or they want to move on and become a director of another department, that was fine with me. I wanted them to improve on whenever they wanted to re improve right. on. What would you tell young people today about the, this environment and, and what the advantages are in becoming a supervisor and eventually a manager and moving up in, in a healthcare organization? Well, I think especially in healthcare, you have so many opportunities to grow. Um, like I was just saying, I've had staff that worked for me as environmental services aide that were now the nurse managers on floors. Yeah. And I see them every day and they still thank me for that opportunity to let them go and, you know, achieve their goal. That's awesome. So I would say anybody young is that you have the opportunity to do great things. Mm -hmm. You can start off from the bottom and still work your way to the top. Mm -hmm. um, healthcare facility is definitely a place where you have different opportunities to, um, achieve any goal that you want you know prior for me going into uh hospitals in 2008 i was in hotels and <clears throat> i worked a lot of weekends like worked a lot of holidays uh worked some pretty long stressful hours um on the job hospitals are a very different environment than hospitality world uh, yet a lot of hospitality elements are now coming in to the hospital world, which is a, is a good thing. Right. Uh, but the one thing that hospitals, to me, always was able to do much better than the hotels was the supporting education, supporting career development, and the necessity to really learn and understand regulatory compliance and things like that. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's expected that you do continuing education. 
Yeah, with hospitals, it, it, it's a learning process every day. I mean, yeah. every year we have, we still have to go over different time, kinds of um, training, like um, mandatory training for right. uh, whether it be for new products that come out, uh, what's happening with HIPAA. Right. I mean, that, that's such a, a big deal. You are involved with everything. You can't let patient information get out. Um, you're involved with different, different medical devices. We, uh, you're involved if some, something happens to somebody in, in the hallway, if they collapse. You're responsible to know what to do in that situation, right. how to get in contact with security. So educate, it is a big part. It, it, it is ongoing, but it's something that we have to do because you're not just sitting steady. It's 24-7. That hospital's going 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. So the more you learn and the more you're involved with, the better off you are. And, you know, and, and a lot of these things are, are in place that, because our, our role in a hospital is to take care of others, you know, mm -hmm. and to keep yourself safe, you know. So if there's a code, you know what to do. Right. And especially now, with, we, we just had the pandemic, and I tell everybody the same thing is that, you know, our ob object was to keep everybody safe. I was put on a special task force through the hospital that reopened a lot of different offices and companies that wanted to stay safe during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I was a cleaning and disinfection uh, expert. A lot of the training we get is really the, the ability to take care of others, you know, and having our attention on others, but also how to take, keep ourselves safe. And yeah, like I was saying about the pandemic is that we focus, we focus so much on what was happening to everyone else and taking care of people that not everybody in the hospital took care of themselves. Right. We had nurses every day, doctors that were in these rooms not knowing what was going on with this pandemic. Right. And still taking care of them and then having to go home and deal with their families. Right. So there was a lot at stake. And everybody that worked in healthcare did an amazing job because they did put them, the patient first yep. and themselves second. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, um, you know, you have critical conversations, with, with, whether it be a family member or, or team members or people you work with, is that whole idea of self-care. Um, you know, the old adage, you know, on a plane, it's like if the oxygen mask falls off, what do they tell you to do? They, they tell you to put it on yourself, yourself first, first and then help other people, right? And it's sort of the same thing. If, if you don't do enough self-care as a manager or a supervisor, you're really not able to fulfill your duty in the job you're supposed to do, no, no. can you? Right, because if you're, if you're not helping and supporting yourself, you're not going handling things in the correct way, you're not gonna be able to pass it on to the next person coming up. Right. As a leader, you have to, as we talked about before, manage your own emotions mm -hmm. and have a positive impact on somebody else. Right. So what is your role at Destiny Training Partners? <clears throat> well, I'm a leadership consultant, but also I do a lot of the training. Um, said I'm one to likes to roll my sleeves up mm -hmm. and do things hands-on. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of the training with staff, environmental staff in different hospitals, whether it be um, floor refinishing, carpet extraction, daily cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of my forte. I like to do that, I like to get involved, I like to get things done. Right. Like I said, the best things for me are things that I can see my results. Yes. I, I love vacuuming. You see your results right away. I love stripping and refinishing floors because you can take something that looks so bad and make it look so good. Right, right. And we always, I always tell everybody, uh, the first impression is the lasting impression. Yeah. So you wanna make sure that everything you're doing is perfect and looks great. When people, when patients are in a hospital, what's interesting, there's, there's basically anybody, any patient can judge the quality of the food or their cleanliness. They might not understand the medical aspects, the clinical aspects, or what the tests that are being performed, they, they might not understand any of that. But the one thing that patients will always know, is my room clean, and is the food any good? Right. And what are they comment on the most? Cleanliness and, and the food. And food. <laughs> And yeah, it's the two biggest questions. We talk about it all the time is that that's what they're looking at. Is my room clean? So 
I always try to tell my staff, if your family was here, yes. how would you feel? You have to put yourself in the patient's shoes. Yeah. You have to make that room be as perfect as possible as if your own family was staying there. That's important because you're keeping people healthy, keep, especially nowadays. Yes. You, you want to keep people from being sick, and you have such an important role in that. If something's not clean, disinfectant, they can be sick. They can even die. That's right. They and, can die. And you wouldn't want that happening to your family. So mm -hmm. we play such an important role mm -hmm. in, cl in cleaning in the hospital. And that's why no matter what an environmental services or support services role should never be taken lightly. You should mm -hmm. never feel that you don't do anything important because what you do keeps your job, keeps the hospital open, and keeps people healthy. There, there's no, it's a, and that's a really, really good point. And, and I think that, you know, it, it's, a, it's a shame in some cases where I've seen the pride kind of go away on support services or, or they feel like the, 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 the neglected stepchild, you know. And, and in some cases they have every right to feel that way, and, and I don't disagree with that. But I, I feel it, it's a leadership situation. It's a management situation that is not, have, has not been resolved yet or acknowledged that, that we need to take care of these folks, regardless of what their position is, because everybody matters in, in this, this dance called healthcare. I mean, everybody's input has something to do with, the, with having a good outcome. Yes, and that, we hear it a lot when we're talking to different staff, though all, our leaders don't pay attention to that. Right. And that's why we say, well, I can't tell you what the rest of the hospital is doing, but with your department, you can make a change. Right. You follow yes. what we're teaching you about leadership, and you can make the change in your own department. That's right. And, and, and you know, the thing is, people notice when that happens, you know, even, even in those environments, other departments will see that as well. And so you can be the source of uh, inspiration uh, regardless of, of your position.